So, today I will describe an algorithm based on dynamic programming. The uh, problem that I am going to uh, take for uh, uh, describing this uh, uh, paradigm is suggested by a colleague of mine, Professor Arnab Bhattacharya. This uh, problem uh, is as follows. Let us suppose that we have uh, a, a series of wooden poles or trees, if you want, of various heights uh, planted along a straight line. say various heights uh, uh, are h 1, h 2, h 3 and so on. Our goal is to cut these trees uh, such that the final result is uh, monotonically non uh, decreasing which means that the height as we proceed either is same or greater. But we want to do this in such a way that we cut the least amount of wood. So, for example, in this case uh, a possible solution uh, could be that uh, we cut this here. So, we keep this much. we keep this as it is, then we keep this whole thing, we may keep this whole thing. Let me just, uh, just to make the point, uh, let me make it slightly longer sequence. Okay. So, here what we do is, we completely cut it off, completely remove this. Uh, we keep this entire tree and then we completely remove this. So, what has happened is that of the remaining trees or the remaining part of the trees, these are the lengths and that. Although there is one uh, tree in between which is completely eliminated, that is not a problem, but what remains, whatever the trees that remain, they must be in uh, monotonically non decreasing. So, this is the goal and what we want to minimize is the total amount that we have cut that is these, uh, this plus this and plus this. This we want to minimize, which is equivalent to saying that whatever lengths are remaining, their sum should be maximized. Okay. So, let us suppose these are the lengths of the remaining trees and so on. Uh, so, this would be uh, since this is reduced to nothing for this case it is m k this was h k and so. So, we have h sorry k trees and their lengths if you write down as a set can be uh, say a 1, a 2, a p and we include a 0 in this set. So, let s denote the set of various lengths that have been presented to begin with and 0. So, each of the h i that is uh, each h i belongs to s uh, that is what we have. So, clearly the number of elements in s can be at most k plus 1, because we have added 0 in it. So, first claim that I want to make is that, 
if claim that is if m1 m2 through mk is uh, an optimal solution then each m i belongs to s this we will prove first the purpose of this result is that that reduces the search space of the solution now we know that only possible heights can be from this set so let's try to establish this claim uh, let us suppose that m i somewhere here is the rightmost number in this sequence which does not belong to s. So, everything to the right of m i belongs to set s. Okay. So, suppose m i is the rightmost uh, number uh, which does not belong to s does not belong to s all right since it does not belong to s it has to be so it is the result so m i let us look at this suppose this is somewhere here uh, let us say somewhere here we have m i this is m i this was h i and m i m i is the result of cutting a part of h i clearly we have definitely cut something in it hence there must be some j such that m i is between a j and a j plus 1 because it does not belong to s. Okay. So, there exists a j says that uh, a j is less than m i is less than a j plus 1. Okay. Besides, let us take a look at m i plus 1. Since we know that m i plus 1 belongs to the set s and uh, that is greater than equal to m i, but m i does not belong to s. So, this inequality is strict. Also, uh, m i is strictly less than uh, m i plus 1. Now, m i plus 1 which be, which is actually uh, this belongs to s m i plus 1 belongs to s a j plus 1 is a member of s. So, uh, we can also say that uh, a j plus 1 is less than or equal to m i plus 1 because this is also member of s this is a member of s this is the nearest member of s to m i. So, what we have noticed is that there is an alternative solution which is m 1 m 2 m i minus 1 instead of m i we re, we replace it by 
a j plus 1 m i plus 1 all the way up to m k. From these inequalities what we notice is this thing is less than or equal to this and this thing is in fact this is strictly less than this and this is less than equal to this. So, monotonicity is held and one more thing we have to also establish that a j plus 1 is possible that is to say the original height of ith tree is greater than or equal to this, but that is also obvious uh, note that this has to be less than or equal to h i. The reason is this belongs to s, this belongs to s, this is the nearest s member to m i. Hence, this has to be greater than or equal to this. So, this is a feasible solution, but what is important to notice is that in this solution we are cutting less wood, because this is longer than the original uh, height of the uh, solution that we had suggested m 1 through m i. So, this has to be better solution, but that original solution was given to be optimal. So, this should not be possible this uh, this uh, solution is uh, feasible and better than the given solution than the given solution m 1 through m k. Uh, this is a contradiction because that is optimal. So, we conclude that every uh, number m i belongs to set s. Okay. So, the conclusion is, so we conclude that each m i belongs to s. Okay. So, this is done. Now, let us try to uh, review what dynamic programming is about. In dynamic programming, uh, we propose a family of problems such that the given problem is a member of that family. The size of this family that is the number of problems in this family must be polynomial in the parameters of the problem the smaller problems in the family must be easy to solve and we should be able to construct the solutions of the uh, upper or higher problems from the solutions of the lower problem. So, this is how we build bottom up, we proceed uh, bottom up and finally, that the original given problem is either uh, one of the problems of the family or it is constructed, the solution of that is constructed from the top level members of the family. So, this is how uh, we will try to solve this problem and the key step in this is the definition that I am giving. Let me define uh, w i alpha j beta. This is a number which indicates the that if the problem is if the input problem is starting from ith pole to jth pole from ith to jth pole we are given the same trees various uh, heights etcetera we are given those and this number denotes the optimum solution, the maximum remaining, the sum of the heights of the remaining trees. We are op maximizing the uh, sum of the heights of the uh, final trees after cutting. This is the uh, optimum value of that. 
subject to the condition that this is in the solution this is cut to alpha and this has been cut to height beta. Okay. Uh, we insist that these are fixed, these heights must be what spe are specified here alpha and beta, everything else can be whatever it is and we want to denote the optimum solution to be this. Uh, for uh, our uh, previous notation, uh, if m 1 through m k is an optimum solution, then uh, that is actually nothing but w 1 m 1 k m k. It is this is some m i. Okay, this is what this notation means. But in indicating this or in defining such a notation, I have uh, basically introduced the whole idea of uh, dynamic programming. Now, this uh, function with four parameters, for each set of parameters, we have a problem. You know, we have a certain i, certain j, certain alpha and beta, we have a problem. And in case i is equal to j, obviously, uh, alpha and beta should be equal that answer is trivial, we have to do nothing, the answer will be alpha in that case. So, you notice that if the displacement between i and j is 0, then that is a trivial case. And what we will do is, we will build the solution by uh, so cutting this, splitting this range i to j and taking the solutions of the two parts and then stitching them. So, that is how we will uh, build the uh, values of w i alpha j betas for various values of the parameter. Now, our goal is to compute what is the relationship of this with our problem. Well, in our problem, the first and the third parameters we understand should be 1 and k. What is the possible value of alpha? So, the possible value of alpha can be, this alpha can be any number in set S, which is less than or equal to h 1. Okay. Alpha is any number in set S less than or equal to h 1 and beta is any number uh, in S with the two possibilities for one, uh, either beta can be 0, it can be 0, because in monotonicity 0 does not matter or it should be a number in S, which is greater than equal to alpha and less than equal to uh, h of k. Because if it is not 0, then clearly it has to be at least alpha and it can never exceed the initial height h k. So, this is the possible, mm, these are the various numbers and we will pick the largest of those. What, whichever is the largest among all these possibilities we will pick that as the final solution of our problem. So, now let us see how do I compute a one particular uh, instance of w, one, uh, sorry it is uh, i j alpha beta. So, this is i alpha j and beta. Okay. There are two possibilities in this case. Uh, the first case is that uh, alpha is less than or equal to beta. 
and the second case would be that beta is 0 irrespective of what alpha is. These are the two possibilities. So, let us say we have our ith pole and jth pole that those have been cut to alpha and beta for the moment I am taking this case. Now, in the intermediate posts in these places there are two possibilities that in the optimum solution there is at least one of these remains that is not all of them have been wiped out completely that is one possibility. Okay. There is a possibility that maybe this uh, tree has some length greater than equal to alpha less than equal to beta in the final solution or the second possibility is that all of them have been reduced to 0 which is also valid. So, in the latter case the solution is alpha plus beta because this is the only remaining length. So, our final solution cannot be less than alpha plus beta. So, this is one of the contender in the solution, but the other possibilities we do not know where uh, we will have a tree which is non zero in the final solution. So, we will have to search, we will pick a position r and we will actually uh, set r to anywhere from i 1 i plus 1 to j minus 1, we will pick an r and what we know is the height of this tree in the final solution has to be from set s, set s is the set of values that we were originally given, it has to be one, uh, one of those. So, we will try out all possible values from alpha to beta, but what whichever is all these values are allowed as long as they are less than or equal to h r the original height because we cannot increase the height. So, let us with this picture what we will do is we will try a, we will pick a particular height for uh, r which is valid and pick the optimum solution of this that is this height is fixed this height is fixed pick the optimum solution of this optimum solution of this. Now, i and r and r and j these are closer than i and j. So, we assume that we have already solved this problem, we have already solved this problem and then uh, we combine them. Now, each of these options will give me a possible solution and will pick the largest of them. So, let us write down the algorithm uh, w i alpha j beta. Here we assume that i is less than equal to j, this is assumed that is how we will uh, consider those sub problems. So, let us first of all discard a few possibilities. If uh, alpha is larger than beta, and beta is not 0, then return 0, because this is not going to happen. We know that optimum solution will have length at least alpha plus beta. So, this will not be considered. The second possibility is if the base case i is equal to j and alpha is equal to beta, then there is nothing to be done, then return alpha, this is the best solution you can have. Okay. Now, we are going to consider first of all those solutions in which at least one intermediate tree is not completely cut down. 
but we do not know which one. So, we have to search everything. We will initialize this x which stands for the total the sum of all the lengths of the cut down trees after cutting down. So, we initialize at 0 and then for each. Now, we have uh, to select an r value from i plus 1 to j minus 1. So, for each r equal to i plus 1 to j minus 1. Let us do this. Yeah. Now, if we want to split this problem into two independent problems, what we have decided is we will assume a fixed specific height for the tree in rth position and we will search for various heights that way we will cover every part of the ground. What we have to keep in mind is in this search we will not consider uh, 0 height at position r, because at least one of the intermediate trees is going to be non-zero. And if all of them are 0, that case is very special, we will consider that at the end. So, the height gamma at r, this height has to be uh, starting from alpha it has to go to beta with the condition that it does not exceed the original height h r. So, I am going to define two parameters p, which is the minimum of uh, alpha and h r, because we will have to start with this height, while we search, we will begin with this height and we will go up to a height q. Let me express that, because there are couple of conditions to observe. So, if beta is 0. So, now it is possible that beta is 0 Hence, this does not impose any condition on gamma, the height that we will be considering at position r. Then, uh, we will take uh, q to be equal to h r, the full height. Full height is also valid. else uh, when beta is not 0. In that situation, we will take q the up, upper limit for gamma will be minimum of um, h r and beta. We can go only up to that. So, now uh, we are going to consider various uh, values of gamma for gamma equal to p 2 q. Now, here I want to point out that these are all members of S and here I am referring to various values inside set S ranging from p to q, not anything else, only the numbers inside set s. So, I will say in set s do. That way, I am considering all possibilities, provided h r is, uh, sorry, the m r, the final value at 
r is non zero then we definitely are considering all possibilities well let me now see what has happened what we have here at ith position a fixed length alpha at jth position a fixed length beta and at rth position we have a fixed length gamma and we want to now subject to these three values fixed i want to compute the optimum then it is very trivial this and this have no business with each other because monotonicity ensures that this is the largest among all and smallest among all of these so we can pick the best solution of this pick the best solution of this and build the best solution of i j uh, i alpha j beta well the best solution we know already exists so let's do build a number out of it let's say that will be w i alpha uh, r gamma plus w r gamma and j beta so this the solution of this plus solution of this only thing is this has been counted twice so i am subtracting gamma okay so this is a very easy to construct uh, solution uh, we have uh, got these solutions of the two sub problems once we have this uh, what we are going to do is check if the present value of x if it is uh, already better than y then there is no point in picking this so we will say if x is not as good as y then x is assigned y okay so we have built uh, the solution and updated the value of x so uh, now this search where we are picking every possible value of r in the range i plus 1 to j minus 1 and every possible value of uh, gamma from p to q we should get the best solution at the end of the day where at least one tree is not completely wiped out between i and j okay so let's say we have over here once we come out of this for loop now we are going to consider the last option namely if x is less than alpha plus beta okay this is the option due to the fact that all of the uh, values uh, in between are zero then x equal to alpha plus beta so now if we are convinced that we have taken care of all possible cases and indeed the value of x must be now at this point the optimum value of this sub problem which ranges from i to j and where the end values are fixed at alpha and beta so now we can simply return x now the thing is this solution was possible 
under the assumption that these values were already available to us. The important thing is in these two cases the difference between i and r here, here r and j, these differences are less than the difference between i and j. So, if we proceed computing this w values from minimum difference to maximum difference, we can certainly compute this and we can compute this uh, in um, uh, polynomial time. Uh, actually, the time is since this whole uh, step takes p 2 q which is order s, order the cardinality of s and this is order k in the worst case. So, into k times s we will be able to compute this. So, now let us try to organize this computation in such a way that all the lower values are available when we try to compute the larger values. So, now let us put together a set of loops. So, we will compute compute w all values of w. So, we begin with for d equal to 0 2 k minus 1. The d denotes the difference between the, the two end points of the sub problem namely i and j. For i equal to 1 to uh, k minus d. Okay, so, what we are defining here is that the range will be i to i plus d, i to i plus d. This guarantees since we are starting from d equal to 0 to higher values, we are guaranteeing that the uh, sub problems being computed are increasingly having larger and larger displacement. Then we have to see what that we are ensuring all possible values of alpha and beta. So, we are having alpha. So, the possible value of alpha can be uh, h i that is the i s position the value of the tree can be h i down to uh, down to 0 in set s. Okay, all these values which belong to set s. Okay. And the value of uh, beta for beta Well, again it can be h j and down to alpha. Starting from h j, we will go down to alpha, but we are also allowed 0 value. We are also allowed the 0 value. So, this will be 0 and the other set of values are h j down to alpha. Okay. Uh, I think we do not have j, it is actually i plus d, the j value is i plus d. So, i 
plus d is what we will write here. So, all values starting from h i plus d down to alpha, if alpha is already greater than beta, of course, it is not of any interest to us and special case is 0. And then we can compute uh, w i comma alpha i plus d comma beta. This is the subroutine that we have already discussed and that will work now. So, with this we have completed the computation of every feasible w. So, every valid set of parameters for those w value will be computed correctly. Now, uh, the cost of the computation. Oh, there is one more thing, I should actually explicitly write down what is the final solution. So, let me write down that. Uh, after computing the values of the stable w, that is values for all the meaningful set of parameters of w, we have got this. We will compute now max of the following numbers, max of Uh, 1 comma alpha comma k comma beta for all values of alpha and beta in set S. Uh, I, I sorry, it is W of that. So, the W of 1 comma alpha k comma beta. Uh, such that alpha is less than equal to beta, we will consider those and of course, max of we could combine the two, but I am just explicitly writing it down 1 comma alpha comma k comma 0 for various values of alpha in S. So, these are the finally, the, the uh, numbers from which we have to pick the largest and return that as the solution of our problem. So, my solution is this, this is my final solution. Okay. Now, let us take a look at the time complexity of uh, the algorithm. Clearly, what we notice here is these loops introduce the total cost of uh, k square and p plus 1 square in the worst case, because alpha and beta are well this also this thing is also in set S. So, these two values are running in set S, which is which has got p plus 1 elements and these values run at most k time. And now, computing the, the value of w, if you look at the algorithm here, this runs at most k times, this one runs at most p times. Okay. My mistake, this p is different from the cardinality of s. So, ignore that, Maybe I will just say p prime, avoid the confusion. So, this entire thing will take order k times p time. So, let me write down this as k into p. Well, so this is order k cube p cube this is the total time complexity of the algorithm, which is probably not very good, but at least it is a good uh, example 
of a dynamic programming based algorithm. That's all. Thank you.